from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratik Shamishra and in today's episode, we're going to offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. India, a vibrant tapestry of faiths, welcomes people of all religions to practice their beliefs freely. From towering temples, echoing with Sanskrit chants, to serene mosques and majestic churches, the country offers a treasure trove of historical and famous pilgrimage sites for both Indian and international devotees. This surge in spiritual tourism has revitalized the landscape, breathing new life into centuries-old traditions while enriching the cultural tapestry of the nation. Let's take a look. Be it Mathura Vrindavan, the birthplace of Lord Shri Krishna, the Golden Temple in Amritsar, Haji Ali Darga in Maharashtra, or the Mahabodhi Temple in Bihar. Devotees visit these religious places in India to seek God's blessings and attain spiritual peace. Previously, it was just driven by devotional journeys. But now, religious tourism encompasses a wide range of experiences. And now, people are rejoicing in their happy moments by visiting religious places for holidays, making them their tourist destinations. According to statistics, India's economy related to religious places has crossed Rs. 3 lakh crore. Meanwhile, tourists in large numbers come to India every day to experience India's historical places and ancient temples, enriched with age-old vibrant culture and traditions. Hinduism is popular across the world and the number of people who believe in Lord Krishna is also increasing continuously. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness, that is ISKCON, has a great contribution in preaching the religion. There are many temples of ISKCON in India where foreign followers of Lord Sri Krishna come every year in large numbers. The devotees who come from abroad experience spiritual energy here that uplifts their consciousness and they like the vibe so much that they often choose to stay in India for a longer period. Yes, it's very different. This is different energy. In my country, Tamagun. Also, when I go to the street, some many, many dark dresses and many, many sad faces. Just Tamagun. But in India, it's so bright and so happy face, very kind. Enjoy it. Alongside Hinduism, Sikhism flourishes in India, with Amritsar's Harmindar Sahib, also known as the Golden Temple, serving as the faith's holiest pilgrimage site. This magnificent complex, over 400 years old, boasts a central structure adorned with gold and draws thousands of pilgrims and visitors alike each day. People from diverse religions, including Sikhs from across the world, throng to the revered site in numbers to see Guru's blessings. I just love learning about all the different religions and, and on what it's all about and seeing the beautiful different places, the temples, the um, churches, etc. I just find it fascinating. The beauty of India lies in its diversity. And when we say diversity, it implies particularly religious diversity, that there is room for every religion. Buddhism was also born here. Bodh Gaya, situated in Bihar's Gaya, is one of the major pilgrimage sites as Lord Buddha attained enlightenment over this place. Buddhists from all over the world travel to Gaya to seek peace and enlightenment at the holy site. The influx of pilgrims not only enriches their souls, 
but also significantly contributes to the local economy, fostering cultural exchange and economic prosperity. Here, the Buddha got uh, enlightenment, the Buddha got becoming Buddha, Buddhahood. So, a uh, very, very important to do. Uh, and to be home here, to come here, so very, very important our life. Every day I take meditation, so I can control my mind, I got a peaceful mind, so very peaceful. While religious places are being developed all over the country, Uttar Pradesh, on the other hand, is soon to finalize the construction work of the Grand Ram Temple in Ayodhya town, the birthplace of the most revered Hindu god, Lord Ram. The Ram Mandir complex is expected to become one of the biggest religious places in the country, which will change the entire face of the town. Moreover, keeping in mind the ease of travel for the devotees, a railway station and airport, built on the theme of Ram Temple and equipped with modern facilities, have been recently renovated and inaugurated in Ayodhya. According to statistics, in the year 2022, the number of domestic tourists was 1.4 million, while the number of foreign tourists who came to India was 6.64 million. This scheme, we have approved 40 projects in 2014. And in this case, the development of Varanasi, Prayagraj, और उज्जैन कई बड़ी-बड़ी साइट्स हैं अजमेर शरीफ पुष्कर इन सब का डेवलपमेंट इसके तहत टेकअप किया गया है जिसमें कि खास तौर पे तीर्थ यात्रियों के लिए और जो बिल्ग्रिम्स हैं उनके लिए फैसिलिटीज बढ़ाना है। The Indian government is putting concerted efforts to promote religious tourism by providing better infrastructure at religious places. As a recent government data also suggests that the sector has made so much progress with the profit of rupees 1 lakh 34,543 crore in the year 2022. The various government schemes like the Dekho Apna Desh, Swadesh Darshan and Prasad are aiding to the successive growth of this sector. At the same time, the increasing fate of people in religion has given a new direction to religious tourism which is making a significant contribution to the economy of the country. Moving on, as the Grand Ram Mandir consecration ceremony concludes in India's temple town of Ayodhya, the entire nation is soaked in the ocean of devotion. From big Indian political figures to artists from the entertainment and sports fields, Everyone came to witness this once-in-a-lifetime event. With that, India unfolded numerous stories serving the testament to communal harmony and national integration. Have a look. The multicultural country of India is a vibrant blend of ancient traditions, architectural excellence and diverse ethnicities. Moreover, the thread of brotherhood that ties communities together to form a kaleidoscope empowers the nation to maintain resilience. With that, as the holy town of Ayodhya dives deep into the devotional ocean filled with Lord Ram's presence, the whole of the nation rejoices in the shared faith. For the Ram Mandir consecration ceremony held on 22nd of January, invitations were sent to over 4,000 saints and dignitaries from India and around the globe, uniting India with countries that share a common faith. As the nation witnessed the Pran Pratishtha ceremony, Indians rejoiced in the homecoming of Lord Ram by lighting diyas and bursting firecrackers, irrespective of their faiths. Whether it be Lal Chowk's clock tower, Agra's Darga or Ayodhya's Saryu Ghat, each place was soaked in the spirit of devotion. Maintaining this spirit, India yet again unfolded stories empowering nation integration and communal harmony as people from diverse communities came together to make the timeless event a great success. 
Recently, adding to the spirit of religious ardors, Jammu and Kashmir's Batul Zehra, a first-year college student from Uri, sang a Ram Bhajan in Pahari language to connect the valley with the Ram Temple Pran Pratishtha ceremony of Uttar Pradesh. I heard a Hindi Bhajan from Jubi Notyal, so I thought it was very good. तो उस वजह से मैंने कहा कि जब ये हिंदी में गा सकते तो मैं से अपनी अपनी पहाड़ी लैंग्वेज में क्यों नहीं गा सकती तो मैं बैठी कॉपी पेन लेके मैंने ये बजन अपनी पहाड़ी लैंग्वेज में गाया मेरी मदर टंग में गाया तो फिर मैंने इसे क्या किया मैंने इसे रिकॉर्ड किया रिकॉर्ड करके मैंने सर को सुनाया सर ने कहा हाँ बहुत अच्छा है तो जिनके कश्मीर रहड़ के साथ मैं काम कर रही हूँ तो उन्होंने ये पोस्ट किया और वहाँ से ये जो मेरा राम भजन है ये बहुत वायरल हो गया तो इस टाइम जैसे मैंने राम भजन गाया तो हमारे मुस्लिम भाइयों ने भी मुझे बहुत अप्रिशिएट किया बहुत कांग्रेस के कांग्रेस की मुझे कि आप ने इतना अच्छा गाया Ram is for everyone. Proving this notion right is another instance when the Muslim community in India's capital New Delhi carried out a cleanliness drive near the Bulandarwaza. The initiative was taken after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's call for the nationwide cleanliness of the holy sites ahead of the Grand Ram Mandir ceremony. Both the Hindus and Muslims participated to clean the city, making people aware about maintaining cleanliness. while distributing diyas to lighten their houses on the occasion of the momentous event hum desh bhar ke pasmanda musliman delhi ke khaja baki billa dargah par ikatthe hue hain aur humne pure desh ko ye sandesh dene ki koshish kari hai ki jis tarike se pradhan mantri narendra modi ji ne kal ajmer dargah par 812ve urs par sufi samuday ke sath is desh ke muslim samuday ki aastha mein apni vyavastha ko darshaya hai ठीक उसी प्रकार से आज हम भारत देश के पसमानदा मुसलमान इस देश के हिंदू धर्म की आस्था रखने वाले लोगों के बीच में जो मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम श्री राम जी में आस्था रखते हैं उस आस्था में अपनी व्यवस्था निभाएंगे हम भी ख्वाजा बाकी बिल्ला की दरगाह से स्वच्छता अभियान शुरू करेंगे उसके बाद यहाँ घर घर जाएंगे घर घर पाँच दीप देकर आएंगे इस निमंत्रण के साथ देंगे के साढ़े पाँच साल बाद मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम जी वापस अपने नगरी अयोध्या लौट रहे हैं तो हम इस देश के हर हिंदू हर मुसलमान से ये अपील कर रहे हैं कि आप उस दिन अपने घर पर दिया जलाएं, दिवाली मनाएं। Ahead of the grand event in Ayodhya, flower petals were rained down upon the newly built revered Ram Mandir complex, followed by the Pran Pratishtha ceremony performed with the traditional rituals. Along with the common folks, celebrities from the Indian movie industry, sports person and political leaders came to witness this religious extravaganza. People during the occasion were also seen emotional as Ram is not just a name for Hindus but an emotion for the entire India which is ingrained in the country's value system. साढ़े पाँच सौ वर्ष लोगों ने इस पल के लिए प्रतीक्षा की है साढ़े पाँच सौ वर्ष की बेचैनी उद्विग्नता लोगों के अंदर का जो दुख था क्षोभ था उसका विपरीतीकरण हुआ है इसीलिए ये आनंद का पर्व है आज का भारत नवीन भारत आज का भारत उत्तम भारत मैं यहाँ पैगाम मोहब्बत लेके आया हूँ जहाँ तक पहुँचे मेरे साथ ही आप स्वामी जी साथ में खड़े देख रहे हैं इसी का नाम भारत है हमारी इबादत करने के तरीके अलग ज़रूर हो सकते हैं पूजा पद्धति ज़रूर अलग हो सकती है हमारी आस्थाएं ज़रूर अलग हो सकती हैं लेकिन हमारा जो सबसे बड़ा धर्म है वो इंसान और इंसानियत का है इनिशिएटिव लाइक दीज फॉस्टर एन अनब्रेकेबल बोन बिटवीन कम्युनिटीज मोर ओवर दे कन्वे अ स्ट्रॉन्ग मैसेज ऑफ ब्रदरहुड टू सोसाइटी एज वेल एज टू दर्ल्ड दैट रेसिप्रोकेट्स इंडिया रिच कल्चर And now some of the stories that made news recently. Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid floral tributes to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose on Parakram Divas, which marks the Azad Hind Fauj founder's birth anniversary at Samvidhan Sadan. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla and Congress President Mallikarjun Kharge also paid their tributes to Netaji on his 127th birth anniversary. PM Modi also interacted with the students at Samvidhan Sadan. Notably, Netaji Subhashchandra Bose's birth anniversary is celebrated on January 23 
as Parakram Divas every year. Bhubaneswar conducted a successful experimental trial of utilizing drones to provide superior healthcare services in Odisha. The drone completed the successful journey of 120 km from Ames Bhubaneswar to Community Health Care Centre, Tangi in just 1.10 hours. The drones carried the essential blood supplies weighing around 2 kg without encountering any operational issues in the presence of Ames Bhubaneswar Director Ashtos Biswas. These drones can carry multiple health products including vaccines, essential drugs and diagnostic samples. Prime Minister Narin Modi took a major step related to nation's energy sector after the Ram Temple's inauguration. PM Modi in a meeting decided that the government will launch Pradhan Mantri Sarvodaya Yojana. The Yojana has been initiated with a target of installing solar rooftop systems on 1 crore houses. Moving on, let's take you to the temple town of Madurai in Tamil Nadu, which recently celebrated the 17th century old Thepa Thiruvizha or Float Festival. The event engaged over thousands of devotees from different corners of the region who gathered to witness this religious extravaganza. Let's have a look. The temple town of Madurai in India's Tamil Nadu state is blessed with a social and cultural mosaic while the plurality in the society leverages the common folks to pursue their religious beliefs. Madurai, often known for its monumental beauties, historical sites and religious temples, recently celebrated the float or Thepa Tiruvisa festival. The festival celebrates the reincarnation of Lord Shiva and Goddess Minakshi, also referred as God Sundaresa. During the 17th century, the ruler of Madurai, King Thirumalai Nayak, started this festival for the first time, naming it the Thepam or Flute Festival. The ceremony takes place on the full moon evening in the month of January or February. The annual festival drew thousands of devotees from around the city to Thiruparan Kundaram Murugan Temple who came to witness this religious extravaganza. During this Thepam festival, the rituals are performed on the waters of Mariaman Tepakulam Lake, which is located next to Minakshi Amman Temple. Moreover, as a part of tradition, idols were adorned with flowers, garlands and other embellishments and were thereafter taken on the boat to the other side of the lake. While tying the ropes to the boat, devotees pulled the rope and participated in the procession. Anga Varsorsa or Murugan Pakra Kandi, Kurumoda, and ever Vandruko. I love the Murugan Valiga to her. I now Nangan Varsos on the computer, Yankal Valiga to her, Nambi Yirk. I am a son. Manas the The twelve day long festival was celebrated with joy and devotion. Festivities like these are not just mere occasions for celebration but also powerful tools for preserving tradition and creating social bonding. And now, some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Eight-time world champion Stephanie Gilmore will take a one-year break from full-time competition for the 2024 World Surf League Championship Tour, the Australian surfing legend announced. The 35-year-old who won her eighth world title in 2022 will return to action with a wildcard entry for the 2025 World Surf League season 
after refreshing herself both physically and mentally and following swells and free surfing in new places. Gilmore's announcement comes off the back of American five-time world champion and Olympic gold medalist Carissa Moore revealing that she would step away from competitive surfing following her defense of the title in this year's Paris Olympics. Canada's renowned Redu Canal Skateway, the world's largest natural ice skating rink, opened for skating for the first time in two years, the National Capital Commission said. The 7.8 km Canal Skateway, which first opened over 50 years ago, is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Canada's capital city, Ottawa, and is also a top attraction for skating enthusiasts seeking outdoor thrills during Canada's usually biting cold winters. The canal did not open to skating last season in early 2023 for the first time due to a lack of ice. NCC, which maintains and operates the skateway, said at the time, blaming the closure on a mild winter caused by climate change. The NCC has previously said it can only open when the ice is at least 12 inches thick, for which there must be 10 to 14 consecutive days of temperatures between minus 20 degrees centigrade and minus 10 degrees centigrade. And lastly, let's take you to India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the Indian Army and the administration have set up a medical camp for the Bhakarwals, a nomad community who are prepping up for their seasonal upward migration to the summer capital of Srinagar. The community members, along with their cattle, are made to undergo medical checkups before they embark upon the journey. With that, they are also being informed and aware of the various government schemes. Have a look. The winter season is about to end and Bakharwals, a nomad community in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, is prepping up for a month-long migration to the summer capital, Srinagar. The Gujar Bakharwals in Jammu and Kashmir are among those tribes who are largely dependent on animal husbandry. The Indian Army and the administration aware of their seasonal migration have set up medical and general assistance camps in Palawala sector of Jammu district. At these camps, the members of this tribal community, along with their cattle, undergo medical checkups. They are also made aware of several schemes the government has launched for their welfare. छह महीने यहाँ रहते हैं, छह महीने हम सरिनगर में चले जाते हैं। माल मवेशी लेकर हम हमारा कार बार है जो माल मवेशी पर है। तो हम शुक्रिया दा करते हैं। पहले आपका शुक्रिया दा करते हैं हमारे पास आए वक्त में कारा आपना क्यों की? फिर हम फौज का शुक्रिया दा करते हैं जिसने ये काम लगाया। हमारे कुछ बंदूकों तो कहाँ पे लगाया दवाई भी दे रहे हैं माल में वेश्य की दवाई भी दे रहे हैं इन लोगों को आयुष्मान कार्ड जो है हमारा उसके बारे में बताया गया है इनके राशन कार्ड के बारे में बताया गया है और गवर्नमेंट की जो स्कीम्स रहती हैं उनके बारे में इनको बताया गया है और मुझे लगता है कि हमने इनसे ये प्रॉमिस भी लिया है कि जो ये यूथ है इनका नोमेस का ये जो हमने आज इनफॉरमेशन इनको इंपोर्ट की है ये आगे अपने लोगों को बताएंगे ताकि इनफॉरमेशन को अच्छे डेफिशेंट ना रहे विकास आज इन लोगों के पास अगर कुछ किसी चीज़ की कमी है तो वो इन्फॉर्मेशन की कमी है अब जैसे इनसे पता चला है तो हमारी यही ट्राई रहेगी कि हम नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन डेज में जैसे मैजर साहब से डिस्कस करके हम करेंगे कि नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन डेज में हम एक ऐसा कैंप किया जाए इन लोगों के लिए जिसमें हम वेटनरी एनिमल हस्बेंड्री डिपार्टमेंट को भी इन्वॉल्व करेंगे और लाइफ स्टॉक की भी इनकी जो रहेगी क्या बोलते हैं इंस्पेक्शन रहेगी या उनका चेकअप रहेगा वो भी करवाने की कोशिश करेंगे ड्यूरिंग देयर जर्नी थ्रू द फॉरेस्ट द नोमैड कम्युनिटी हैज टू रिमेन एक्स्ट्रा कॉशस ऑफ एनी कम्युनिकेबल डिजीज एलिंग देयर कैटल इन दीज सिचुएशन it becomes important to have veterinary assistance from the team of doctors deployed for their health checkup at every stretch. 
The medical camps organized at Palawala will ensure that their livestock and community itself do not fall victim to any ailment during the journey. हम शुक्रिया अदा करते हैं इस इंडियन फौज का हर बार ऐसे ही कैंप लगाती है हमें अपनी गाड़ी में लाते हैं बेचते हैं और दवाइयां देते हैं हर एक मुश्किल पहुंचाते हैं गवर्नमेंट तक तो हम शुक्रिया अदा करते हैं इस फौज का द इंडियन आर्मी प्रोवाइड्स देम फ्री मेडिसिंस एंड कंडक्ट्स हेल्थ चेकअप्स टू इंश्योर अ सेफ माइग्रेशन टू द अपर रीचेस ऑफ कश्मीर The Indian Army along with the administration also equipped them with all the necessary information regarding their rights and welfare schemes regarding education for their children Aishman health cards and other essential services The government puts all possible efforts for the well-being of every individual in these tribal communities As far as seasonal migration of Gujjar Bakharwals is concerned they are all set for a comfortable and safe journey towards their destination that's all we have for you this week i'm your host pratiksha mishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team